Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your next session of Group Therapy. I am King Bear in the building. Michelle K. Cav the Truth Seeker. And ladies and gentlemen, we got a really special show for you today. <laughs> We're going to do a little talking today. We're going to delve into some special topics. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let us know what you think about the... Uh, the show and you know feel free to the pipe in on anything because we're always listening so you guys ready to get to it yeah i yep. definitely want to get into this all right yep. so without further ado let's get to it one thing we're talking about with leaders is if you go to group therapy and this is something that i emphasize no two group leaders are necessarily going to lead group in the same way Every time I turn around, there's a something day. It's National Pets Day. It's National Mental Health Day. It's yeah. Na health Day. It's National Coffee Colombian <laughs> Coffee. Day. You're right. Yeah, but that, but that, that's what it is, and people feed into that. It's no coffee, and you're supposed to love your pets every day. You know what I mean? It's like National Pet Day. They're giving awards to people who are the um, the losing teams now. For, you know. oh. Yeah, we celebrate mediocrity. Yeah. Yep. The ones Part that two. lost the, the game, they're getting trophies. Yeah, and we lost. condemn winners. That's how what we do as a society. How many right. times well, are you going to how, win? How right. dare you be excited about winning? Right. Don't you see that the person that you crushed their feelings are hurt. <laughs> you're such a monster because you're celebrating while their feelings hurt. Look how they feel right now. Do better. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that anymore. Right, you can't, but that's what you'll want to tell your team. Like, come on, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You baby, everybody here, everybody gonna feel bad when they win. Yeah. Nobody gonna wanna win anymore because yeah. it takes the fun out of you. I feel bad for the person who lost. And that's what they want society to be. Mm. They want everybody to everybody feel like winners. Oh, you don't feel bad? Oh, you don't feel bad for that team losing? You don't feel, oh, let's 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 uh, contact his employer. Right. Like, it's messing with their self-esteem now. You know, you don't know what they're doing. They're developing skills. Bitch, making them stronger. Like, y'all yeah, making them, like, weak people, little kids, and want to cry because they're not winning. You know, you got to accept the loss every now and The world is not going to always give you everything you want. Yeah. So if you if you are gearing up to think that that's what they're gonna get all the time, and you gotta praise them even when they lost, they have nothing to look forward to. You're yeah. just setting them up. But that's what social media and the world inside the internet has afforded them, you know. And it goes as deep as when you start getting into filters and and way that people can now uh, project what they feel they look like or their persona mm -hmm. towards people. So now you can get away with what you really are yeah. and get into what you feel like you are. Right. So if I feel like I'm a winner, even though I've lost at everything, you have to celebrate the image that I'm projecting. Mm -hmm. And how dare you talk about what I really look like. Because right. now you're fat shaming, you're body shaming, you're color shaming, you're sex shaming, you're, you're shaming. Uh -huh. like, you're fucking right because it's stupid. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dumb shaming now because you're stupid. Yeah, you, you'll never know what failure looks like. You'll right. think that it's always praise and it's not because right. if you think that, you're going to have a long Hello. road ahead of you. What are you saying, I'm, I'm shame shaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> I think it's a lot to do with, um, you know, the certain age group that, that I think after the 70s going into the 80s with, you know, the drug era, the epidemic and the, the dumbing down of, 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 you know, the graduates from high school. Yeah. And, oh, no you know, child left behind and no all them type behind. of days. Right. So all that whole era of those children that was developing. You know, they were more sympathetic towards the children now. Because, you know, 
Oh, well, your father was on drugs. Oh, oh gosh. Daddy was never home. So they gonna play that all through their whole life. So, you know, I don't think that was seventies or eighties that started doing that. I think that you think it was the, that early, the late nineties yeah, like at least. I know the nineties and the two thousand. Yeah, yeah, the nineties definitely was. When I speak to a lot of people who taught, like teachers who, or people who came from the city, like the, the, the metro that we grew up in, the metropolitan, like a lot of them were able to leave high school and go to work. Because a lot of those trade schools, those you know, um, that we have vocational high schools, mm -hmm. allow them to literally work for the next twenty years and retire mm -hmm. from high school without having to go to a specific trade college or you know, a higher learning. So they had to start from young, is what I mean, uh, being men and women. And I think a lot of the children now that were born from that era that came out from households that were. You know, addicted to drugs or whatever, addicted to alcohol, abusive homes, blah, 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 blah. All of us came from a home that had something that was right. crazy, but something that was not totally 100%. I agree. You know, mentally or physically. But I'm saying, like, they catered, in my opinion, it was catering, uh, pandering to, towards the, not the, I want to say to the, um, the, the unbalance of how you, of people's, behavior uh, they created a lane for it to not just cater to those to say oh you know all these people got arrested when they were young and you know they went to jail um, instead of reforming them right they uh, just pacified them they, they just... pandered to them like, oh, no. and then now those people who are pandered becomes adults that have children don't talk to my Johnny like that. Right. What are you doing? And, and they know they need to be taught like that. No, we need a day for, like you said, we need a, a talk to talk to Johnny okay day. I don't know. Yeah, yeah this one is definitely different. That's the thing. At least the South has, they got their dads, man. You know, she ain't got, they ain't no dads up here. I think it's that's not, all over. That's all yeah, over. It's not, it's not no, the South for the North. With the law in Georgia now, when you happen to um, prove paternity and what is that? My son going through it now with this legitimization. Le legitimate? Yeah. Legitimization? That's the biggest, yeah, that's the biggest what thing. What is legitimization? Because, because you had to legitimize this your child. Oh. Just because you had the baby and all of that you sign a birth certificate that does not mean oh, anything okay. in the state of georgia right you know you're still not deemed that father you know you still gotta go through a lot of little hoops and things like that unless you sign that paperwork i thought that was in every almost no nah, a lot majority. of states mm -hmm. i don't know but georgia is the worst uh, i think that's the best I mean, too. Think so? <laughs> yeah. no, i, I think, think so i think see from being on the other side of that track yeah before as a, as a man, that must be something new what it to legitimize and make sure that's your child? Yeah. I thought that was a yeah. law passed for all states. No, 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 no. Because like when I had my son here and the law used to be in Georgia where if you sign that birth certificate, mm -hmm. even if you find out later that that's not your child, you still Georgia right. still holds you on the on the lamb yes, for did. child support. Right. So if the mom lies and says that that's your child and you believe in her, you sign your name. You're on the hook for that child support, which in Georgia, they will lock your ass up yeah, if you don't they pay. Would, they would. So this, I think, being on that side of the track of, hey, you know what? Let's stop locking up these 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 men for trifling women playing around and let's just make it about, you know what? If this is the who they say they are, let's just make sure right now. If we get this done right here, we ain't got that question but to deal with later. They don't do that anymore in the hospitals. They don't. They don't even bring it up until after the fact. You know, so you don't even know anything about legitimate. I didn't even know that when I had my son. I didn't know that. Right. There was. So I it thought, was just like you just. I thought that was a federal law, but the states have. No, dude. No. no. Every no, state. No. Every state is different. No, but I'm saying didn't did that. I just I heard about that, but I didn't know about the name called legitimate. No, That's every state is different because yeah. if you're in California, mm -hmm. it's different. 
if mm. like in a lot of the um, the more uh, conservative states, yeah. even if you sign the birth certificate, um, you can still once you get a test and it shows that it's not your child, they'll take you out of being yeah. responsible for that child. Okay. Georgia was one of those states. Yeah. You signed it. Yeah. You like should have got a, a test when you got it. Well, okay. I, I, I know. I understand that. I'm saying now, though, this legitimacy law is is in is active now it's, in Georgia. It's been active, though, right? But so what I'm saying is, but it ain't been active that long. I heard of that happening. Mm-hmm. So what I'm asking is, was it a, a federal law passed that certain states adopted and some states have not? I don't know. Well, so if again, it's if certain states adopt and stuff, then it's not a federal law. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I'm not yeah, because if it's a federal law, then all the states all have to abide. Yeah. Federal, federal can mandate that the states regulate something, right. which is the whole thing that like weed's going through right now. Mm-hmm. Like fe- federally, weed is still illegal, illegal yeah. but federal has said, "Hey, states, it's up to you to govern." It. Yeah, but. If we really want to get somebody, mm-hmm. like if they're doing other shit, we could tack on weed too if we want to. Right. But it's still up to the state. So Colorado, you say it's legal. We ain't gonna persecute anybody in Colorado. Mm-hmm. But if somebody is like beating their wives and we know that they're part of a cartel, we're gonna tack weed on there just because right, right, we right. can because we're federal. Right. So federal law. Only uh, once it's a federal law, sure. then it goes across all the states. But if it's a mandate, then it's on the states. Right, right, right. What is it called? Guidelines. So yeah, this, yeah. Federal so guidelines. Mandates are the so, same thing as guidelines. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, basically, the guidelines are, or, or or mandate is a template. Right. Yeah. That, that the feds use and the states kind of create their own policy their own barometer based mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. On, on federal guidelines mm-hmm. right yeah right so yeah federal says hey uh we're gonna say killing people is illegal but states you can decide what killing people really is mm-hmm. but if y'all can't decide we'll still say killing people is illegal but then they have like a, a law, not a law but they like you said a general change of the not when it comes to legitimacy. I mean, they had it for like Roe versus Wade and shit like that. But not when it comes to legitimizing who the uh, maternal and paternal parents of a child is. Not federally. There was nothing across all the states that said this is the law when it comes to that. Right. I'm not thinking of the law that was saying you, you know, you have to check your child out, but. It, didn't they create a, something for the states to say, like you said, to if they want to create a law in the state? Wasn't it being lobbied not too long ago? Mm-hmm. Nobody. Uh, I don't know. I don't even think it if it was. About it. I mean, if it was, it's possible because there's a lot of numbered laws that they try to slide under, so it could have been. We don't even know about but the big thing that they've been talking about, at least in the last year, year and a half, is the whole Roe v. Wade thing. Right. That's the thing that's been on everybody's fucking mind. So if they're trying to slide something underneath it's, beyond that, yeah. it could be. <laughs> yeah. But Roe versus Wade has been the the big, yeah. the big ticket thing right now. Right, so. and because they're trying to reverse. Right. And it's like, and it's a, it's probably an unpopular thing to say out loud, but it's like there's enough people who have mismanaged the responsibility of that Mm -hmm. where now we're back to we're we're back to Roe v. Wade yeah yeah there's enough people out here who have mismanaged oh yeah the abortion clinic look how they was doing things they was they know they was doing things illegally but you know who was saying anything but now everybody want to say something I still think it's wrong you know I think people should have a right to say when they want to abort a baby. And, you know, I don't think that should be a law. Nobody should tell me what I need to do with a child because, I mean. Right. And now, right. And I'm then, considered a middle of the road Republican. Grade A certified. I am definitely a Republican. Um, I think 
what Trump did was brilliant considering the pressure for what he did. Because what we're talking about right now as far as how he utilized or he changed the federal laws, that's what he did with Roe versus Wade. Because Roe versus Wade was a federal law. So pro-choice was a federally protected right. law. So no state can say you couldn't have an abortion. Mm -hmm. So he got enough pressure from the conservative side to change it to pro-life. Instead of doing that, he literally said, you know what? I'm gonna take it out of the federal side and I'm gonna make each state responsible for their own thing. Oh. Now, I think considering the pressure he got, I think that that was a pretty smart move. Because now, each state, it's on the onus of each state rather than on the onus of the federal government to decide. Now, it does upset a lot of people right. because okay. their states can fuck over a lot of people. Right. Ergo, Georgia. Right. Because Kev done been, fucked, yes, yes, Kev yes. fucked a lot of people over royally. Yeah. But I don't see how you fault. And believe me, this is no endorsement on Donald Trump because I think he's a moron too. But the the fucking cackling hoo ha that's trying to be in the office is even worse. Like I, I I'm so confused. Like I, I I can't either way. But I think that when it comes to that, I can't think of a better way that that situation was handled because he would have caught absolute hell if he would have said, "Fuck you, conservatives. It's going to stay pro choice." Because he would have caught absolute hell. Because I think it was the conservatives who was trying to get his ass locked up to fucking begin with. <laughs> so he could have missed him. So he had to, so he had to do something. I just think that, you know, you still just took away the wrong rights. Like, I, but then he talking about what, aborting babies after nine months. <laughs> oh my God. It was okay. almost, you know. <laughs> okay, so what Trump was in that debate, Trump was an old man who just happened to turn on the TV and heard somebody say something and that motherfucker started spewing what he heard somebody well, say. Well, that was a lot of shit that he had heard because yeah. he went on and on about stuff. And they fact-checked him. Oh, my God. That was the funniest because he was so mad. But you just can't keep saying stuff and then make it and think people just yeah. be like, oh, okay, yeah, he said it's true. No, but... But he even said in part of the, the debate, if you listen underneath the tones, like when they were trying to cut his mic, he literally said on a couple of those topics, well, that's what I saw on TV. Right. But so. <laughs> because that's how he do shit. Right, like you right. You make it seem like you just know it for sure. Right. And then it'd be like, well, that's what I heard. I think it's uh, maybe this, that, the other. But, Nick, don't say some shit that you're not 100% sure about. Like, and then you're so adamant about it. But I like Donald Trump. I do. I was. I'm definitely a Trump fan. I don't agree with everything. I don't agree with everything. But I love how he his demeanor is. Now he's an asshole, but I just I don't know. I just like that aggressiveness about him. You that's, know, and he ain't taking shit. That's that New York shit. He, yeah. You need to be an asshole. Yeah, that's, that's that New York because shit. Got now there's no checks and balance. Yeah, everybody, like I had mentioned before, everybody can pop up with a national dartboard day, national weekly board day, <laughs> killing fan day. Yeah. And, nah, I'm not. No, you're spending millions and 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 it's all a distraction. But the thing Donald Trump does, which is kind of annoying, is that he sensationalizes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing is yeah. mil millions, billions, and billions. <laughs> He sounds like the um the yeah. guy in um what do you call people, it? Very good people. Why do you get him to do that? <laughs> and that's him. He he could he could sell bullshit in a minute. Oh, yeah. He'd be like this. But damn, is it true? But he talked like it's so real. But I was the, I was the best administration ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever in the history of America. <laughs> I got the most votes yeah, of any president man. in the history of all presidents. And Nigga, how you lose? Right. <laughs> it was rigged. That him telling. He I know. I know. As soon as somebody would have threw that out of you, he's waiting. Man, oh he was yeah, like, he yeah, was go ahead and say it. Go ahead and say it so I can get on your ass. He was so ready. His 
his whole yeah. focus couldn't even. Once they asked him about the election, yeah, he, he did. started off, and then it was like, fuck that, I did win. Like, <laughs> I don't know what y'all talking about. He couldn't even think straight. Like, <laughs> we have millions. Yeah. millions of people. They love me and all this. Yeah, but you did some many, dumb many, shit. Many, many. He's Bobby many. Brainy. That's what he keeps saying. Many, many, many. Yeah. Many. 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 Wonderful people, terrific people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely, he what? be killing me when he say that, boy. That motherfucker said millions of Haitians have flocked <laughs> to Springfield, Ohio, and they're, they're starving and they're eating all the cats and dogs. I was like, when I heard about the cats and dogs, I was dogs. like, there you go. There you go. That was, there you go. I was like, you. Oh, to this let me let me let me let me <laughs> see this is what america he's doing what america has always done stereotype so no it's not the stereotyping it's not about haitian haitians or you know saying any ethnicity it, like what we do when we're trying to favor an argument purposely right we look for things so yeah. when somebody when somebody blows up a bus in Israel, God forbid, they say a bus was blown up. Uh, okay, um, an Israeli blew up a bus in Israel, right? Now, let's say uh, a bomber jet, uh, okay, uh, a commercial airliner was blown up by six. Somalians, mm -hmm. all right? So, okay, uh, uh, this just in, folks. Um, uh, New York bound Boeing 747 was uh, blown up by Somalia. Instead of saying six Somalians, yeah. mm -hmm. generalize. You know what I'm saying? Instead of saying six Somalians blew up an airliner inbound on the way to New York from Tel Aviv, Israel, they say. Somalia blew yeah. up a plane. Mm -hmm. you know like you mean? said, yeah, they over glorify for good TV. That's what he's doing. They oh, yeah. Do that. Oh, he's oh, yeah. He knows good TV. Oh, he knows good TV. He had his own show. Yeah. I yeah, used that's to watch what, the that's what he did. Yeah, like, right, right. He was good on that he one. Was, like, he mm -hmm. Hell yeah. He, knows so, says, he says a lot. Mm -hmm. says a lot. He's a very good businessman. Uh, he's very, you know, he knows how to Sensationalizes. Sensationalizes. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out there, bush mouth. <laughs> Sensationalize mm -hmm. everything. Of course. He does it all the time. Mm -hmm. I and mean, he's a good marketer. He's a good sales guy. Very good, but yeah. it don't last. That's long. how he won the last election. Yes. Because well, well, who the fuck cares about some goddamn emails? Well, you gotta understand. Come on, Hillary, you could have overcome for fucking right, emails. Right, right. But that's just how Biden won. Right. I mean, he really won by default. Because yeah. Yeah. they, yeah. you know, come on now. They didn't want Trump back in office. Right. Mr. fucked right. up everything. Right. And right. It was like, and then his old ass, you see, he couldn't even last four years. Like, I don't think he's alive. Right. Yep. I don't think he's alive. She really I don't think he's alive. You really? think that's a hologram? a hologram? No, I think it's a fucking clone. Oh, you think so? I I think it's welcome. Uh, I've heard of that you story. You told me that an Asian immigrant ate a dog in Springfield, Ohio. <laughs> I, I, I believe it. I mean, like, it's possible. Not, but I, but plausible. Not the Indians, but not the they part. The they part is the what I got yeah. a problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but it's like it's just like Italian. The French use use tools, guys. You know, like they they, they always pluralize everything. Yeah. But no, it, it's tools. it's just like what Peace just said. Tools, guys. You know. You know. You know. Use peoples. It's like that old commercial because we all watch football. We we've seen it before. It was an old Bud Light commercial. It used to come on in late nineties, early two thousand, and it it sticks to me because like it it really gives a a feed on what American society is. It was the one where uh, it was a Bud Light commercial and a guy was diving for the first down and he, he missed it by like a foot or two. And then the ref comes out and he goes like this and he goes fourth down. And then they say, wait, it didn't seem like it was that, that close. And then the ref comes on the TV and he goes, yeah. He said, because you have to make sure you get it right. He said, 
If it's this, you change the channel. This, good TV. This, change the channel. Good TV, change the channel. So, if you hear, there was a report that one Haitian guy got hungry and he broke into somebody's backyard and ate that dog. Right. Why the fuck is this on TV? Right. But but the same thing as um, the a whole bunch of Haitians have flocked to Springville, yeah. Ohio, Everybody and they're up. breaking in people's houses and stealing their dogs, and they are eating everybody's dogs and cats. Oh, yeah. oh wait the fuck! News. That's a thing. Yeah. They doing that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like Bill said, they yeah. they doing that? That's the same thing like the blacks. You know? Yeah, the blacks, anything they don't that do things right. right. When you right. over, don't want to go to school. The black, but that's that's. A, a broad brush of the whole mm-hmm. right. American, 30, 30 but million. that's that's what sells. And how that works is the legend becomes the fact, and mm-hmm. everybody right. prints the yeah. legend. Right, right, because that's good TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good TV. And Trump, more than anybody who's ever run besides besides Ronald day. Reagan, he grew up as a big knows good know. TV. But listen, news press conference every day, damn. I gotta yeah. say this. Every that day. nigga stayed on Twitter yeah, yeah. four or oh five times God. a day, I, every day. I, I know a bigot when I see him. And you I'm know, just saying, he's. Trump. Here's the thing about Trump. Let me say this. I know a bigot. I know a bigot when I see him. Because my father was the biggest one. Oh. He, no, I'm, I swear to God. Well, they got these tendencies. Like my father used to say, don't play with those dirty Puerto Ricans. I'm like, everybody's not a dirty Puerto Rican on my block. Come on, right. man. So I used to play with them. <laughs> I got beat for it. No, seriously, I came home from being late, playing with my, you know, my friend in the hallway, punch ball, or whatever we was playing. I said, oh, shit, the, the time, just, you know, get away from it. I go home. Went back to my house, trying to sneak in. And my father was like, Gavin, is that you? Come in here. So I went into the, the bedroom, and my mother, my father was there. They were like, so where you been? Why, 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 are you, why are you so late? I was like, oh, you know, I was playing with my friends, and I forgot to, um, the time, you know, ran away with me. He was like, what, what friend? What, what friend he was with? Mm. I said, my Puerto Rican. Why did I say Puerto Rican friend? Mm. I said, my Puerto Rican friend in the, down the block. What? What are you doing with them dirty Puerto <laughs> Rican Let me tell you about them dirty. Yo, hey. he beat me right in front of my mother. Hey, 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 yeah. And um, my father was for real about it. Hey, rest in peace to, to Papa Dawes, but that's not a bigot, dog. That's a racist. <laughs> No, well, I, I can break that. Racist, no. dog. Racist, no, <laughs> that dog is racist. Was racism. Really? He said, "Don't." No, <laughs> <it's racism. laughs> he said, "Don't play the dirty Puerto Ricans." That's that's, that's, that's a racist, Puerto dog. Ricans. That's a bigoted statement. That's like a yeah, white boy saying, that's... "Don't play with them dirty niggas." Right. That, that's a racist. No, no, racism. <laughs> I, I defined all this before. Racism, you... bigotry, prejudice. You... Hey, why you there's playing prejudice with the... and there's why racism and bigotry. Why are you being over here being fucking ghetto with these fucking guys over here? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you got to oh, look. You got to be No, for seriously. It. I, I'll never forget that day, man. My mother went, no, don't kill him. You know, was, Did you go was, back and ever play with them again? I play with them ever since. Oh. All the time. I mean, yeah. They didn't stop me from playing with them. It's just like, know that I... Hey, you know, you can't be having a mixed fucking kit. Yeah, they <laughs> them fucking die. half moolies over here. Mm. <laughs> the fuck oh, you doing? Another situation. <laughs> fuck out of here. I swear on my grandmother's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh, but man. seriously though. Popping, you can't be popping up to Sunday dinner with a half a hamster. <laughs> 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 yeah, but oh, I really don't think um, Joe Biden's alive anymore, man. They built in the perfect excuse. Nah. Like, if you remember that first debate that he had with Trump, mm-hmm. and this motherfucker's battery dying right there at yeah, the motherfucking just, podium. Was touched over. Right. Oh. If you go back and look at his eyes, I like have never seen a more soulless pair of eyes in my really? life. What? Like, I looked at old videos of Biden, even when he was like goofy, falling downstairs and losing it. Right, right. But when you look, like, oh. you could see the whites underneath his eyes and you could see he was, you know, he was looking around. When he was at that podium, that shit looked like, like kind of what Hollywood does with like, uh, when they try to make somebody look demon possessed, where they make the whole oh, thing God. like black. Uh-huh. Like he was just, he was just soulless. He was just kind of standing there and stuttering and shit like this. 
He needed somebody to lead him around. I think there's a and lot then of these a AI. couple days, what? A couple days afterwards, mm-hmm. he gets COVID. Mm-hmm. What did you? And say then we literally the ain't seen him since. When he when he got off the plane, he walked so like, oh my god! I thought he was gonna fall over. I, I couldn't even believe they would even stand beside him. He looked like he was just gonna die. Very like, elusive. Yeah. Very, very like but he it, was not even focused. But he's he wasn't. The, he's not the first and the and the last politician that. To me, they're clones. I, I, you know that. Yeah. They, they sus, sus I, I think we've been able to, to clone people for really? at least the last forty to sixty oh, years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you think about it, we've been able to 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 manipulate DNA for at least the last seventy years. That's it. So why would it be so difficult to believe that we couldn't clone a human? Like the U.S. is one of the only states or one of the only countries. That completely outlawed it, no questions asked. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it just seems very easy to do. Now, if we pop up and right after this election, very shortly after, we hear that Biden has passed. Then we're going to know he's been dead. Exactly. It'd be like, really? I think they did the really? same thing. They did the same thing. They did the same thing. Oh, I think they did the same thing to Bin Laden. I think Bin Laden knew he was sick and he was on his way out, and we needed a villain mm-hmm. to the war because he was on his way out anyway, and he owed. Right. He owed. So, yeah. So you know, so boom through the year, and we needed a reason to get in there so we can go capture Afghanistan and attack Iraq because. Mm-hmm. They had as a strike, which they claim we never found, but we knew we had because we sold it to them. Anyway, uh, yeah. um, when when it was time to go pack up Bin Laden, you know what I'm saying? He was already gone. They had the compound, they had him. And all we had, the public really knew of him. They thought that he was still out there and he just kept dropping videos yeah. every once yeah. again. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I think that he was already packed up. They said they and they said the, it's like the moon landing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They stay, that they staged it. I believe so. Purpose, but I, I believe think so. It was already out. We needed a villain. The United States always supports both sides of the war because we make money both ways. Mm-hmm. It's different than what we're doing with Palestine and Israel, and Ukraine and Russia. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We That's need a villain, and we needed an event powerful enough for the U- United States public to say, "Oh shit, they did this. They killed all these Americans. We think these guys did it." And the American public is going to be like, "Oh, where do you think they did it? Then go no fucking." Let's go get them, right? And we jump behind. Say it, it. It's happened with the 9/11. It's mm-hmm. happened. Freaking um happened with Pearl Harbor. Yeah, World War One and World War Two. That's literally how we got involved. It, it happened with Korea War. It happened with Vietnam. Every time U.S. has gotten involved in a conflict that wasn't our own, mm-hmm. they needed some sort of boost to get us in. And it always was, uh-huh. hey, somebody yeah. did something to us, so we got to go get them. But there was always some sort of political agenda behind it. Every single time. Every single fucking time, every time. What's your What's your take on the um the Gaza Strip? Why you think they're trying to get the guys? I know I know why now. I mean, I've been looking at this this girl oh, for like a year now. Speak on it. Because they're building a canal. Thank and you. The, and the canal is 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 a uh, is is like a channel mm-hmm. between Europe and the Middle East. So that's how they're gonna transfer. Uh, natural resources such as oil and you know what I'm saying and you know yeah. other minerals and stuff like that whoever controls the canal is yeah. going to uh, be able to benefit to their com- to their country's GDP right so they're basically just trying to do a Panama situation right. over in the Middle East area right but they, they market it to us as a holy war as a religious war yeah Mm. It, and because you don't play with people. I don't know about this. Yeah. 1960. They had this plan since the 60s. God, it's easy for Americans to say, don't get involved in that. I don't give a fuck about that canal. Mm. Fuck them. Fuck them in their canal. Let them. It's their land. Let them control it. But if you put religion in it, you don't play with people's God. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. 
get it in the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's that's truly what politics are. Politics have nothing to do with the people. Politics wow, is just the the slick way of those with power mm-hmm. manipulating the others with power. Mm-hmm. That's what politics are. The people are just the like, ones who put them in office to do so. Giving them taxes and all that right. stuff. Right. We're, we're the resources so that the people with power mm-hmm. have leverage to manipulate other people with power. Mm-hmm. That's all we are. Look at what's happened. Look at what, but not not so much Jamaica, but Haiti. We'll take Haiti for example. Haiti, at one point when the French disappeared out of there after the Louisiana Purchase, right? Haiti had their share of dictators. What those dictators did was kill all of the scholars, kill all of the art, kill all of the, I I said scholars education kind of go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Now the people are just kind of left fending for themselves. Mm -hmm. What they can't take from those people are gods. What they did was create their own gods. That's how you get Mm -hmm. this big following of, um, what is it, Baron Samedi? You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the voodoo shit. Mm-hmm. Because the people were in ed, they, they, their education was taken from them. So all they had was God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their, and their interpretation of what a God is. So you get some nigga with a skeleton mask, a top hat, and a bottle of rum in his hand. <laughs> right? Baron Samedi. And they, and, and they fear God. Right. I mean, that's. They did. I mean, if you, it even hits us, that very same understanding of things even hits us closer to home because that's literally how they finally found a way to break us as mm-hmm. black people. Yeah. Because, you know, all the books that are written about lynching, about bug breaking, about uh, any types of mental um, brainwashing or physical labor. None of that would break us. All the 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 mechanical devices that they would use to try to quiet us from talking to each other, quiet us from from passing knowledge, things, none of that broke us. They realized the only way to truly break the original African spirit is to remove our religion and put their religion in our place to the point where we forget who we are start worshiping the way that they want us to believe to the point where we'll die for that shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's literally where we are now. That's what made the submissive black American. Oh, yeah. That That's what was used. Because everything else that they did, it had an effect for the immediate. Mm-hmm. But it didn't have a long-term effect over generations. Right. But like you saying, Bill, once they got in and they mm-hmm. broke us from our traditional religious values from Africa. Now they give you Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. Nothing about my, my God. Oh yeah. My Jesus is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. My That's grandmother. My grandmother won. Go to my grandmother's house and the gay yeah. white dude was hanging above the mantle. Oh, yeah. I'm like, you, back in the day, I'm they like, my, my. Because that's all they depended on because that's right. what they figured that was going to help them get out of what they was going through. Right. It was prayer. Right. And they all that. Right. And it's, was, it, it, it was absolutely like, why amazing. All these, why all these white figures figure yeah. heads all that? Right. And then it was like, all But it's not even all no, that. No, but I was if saying, you realize, I'm saying, there's well, only one figure of Jesus. No, but my thing was this. <laughs> in my church, I was a seven day Adventist. And they, 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 they like Jehovah Witness in the center. Like right, right, right. On Saturdays. Saturdays, right. We had the, the stairs going to the heaven picture with all it, with the with the crowd behind them and the Jesus standing out. But like what do you look like? Going, going, white guy. Everybody who was going to heaven was white. Yeah. And then we had the stained glass windows. Mm-hmm. All the cherubims was yeah. white little white boys yeah. with mm-hmm. two wings. Mm-hmm. My whole point. When I say all these pictures, I meant everything. Oh, okay. Not just Jesus. Gotcha. Picture. Gotcha. Right, the narrative. Yeah, mm-hmm. like in, in, in our quarterlies, we had like, you know, like Sunday school lesson books. Mm-hmm. But they give it to us in quarterly, like every four months, yeah. no, every three months. And this, you go over this, every year, it's like you start from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Genesis all the way. Mm-hmm. There's a brainwash thing that we're doing. And I'm like, why well, all these characters in the book? But, uh, wait. Yeah. You know, everybody, but everybody in my congregation is black. We only had like one black, with yeah. a black 
you know, mixed couple. Systemic brainwashing. That was done ever since and the then, 1400s. And then when I go home, I'm watching cartoons. So during the weekend, we're brainwashed. And in the weekdays, we're brainwashed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So school, we're definitely, brainwashed. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going, I'm watching all the cartoon figures of all, all white guys. Mm-hmm. The only thing closest to a black uh, 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 cartoon character was the thing. You never see no other guy that was straight jet black or mm-hmm. close to black. Something green or dark, you know. Mm-hmm. Other color right. purple. But they were all white, stringy hair dudes. You wanna know what fucked me up? Oh, another thing too. I'm sorry. What's that? What's that? What's that? The picture we got of Harriet Tubman. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Listen, listen. That you, you just kind of see the, 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 the picture, the photograph, the image that we see of Harriet Tubman is, you know, what I'm saying, an elderly woman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, what I'm saying. Harriet Tubman might have been a piece of ass, bro. <laughs> 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 we'll never know because the image they gave us, and I'm using her as an example, is because that's a t- that's something that's a tangible thing. Like you know what I'm saying? You can go see an image of Harriet Tubman. We can we can only go see an interpretation of a Jesus. Mm-hmm. We can only an interpretation of, uh, you know what I'm saying, Muhammad, or, you know what I'm saying, or Buddha. But a Harriet Tubman, and I'm not putting her in the realm of God or anything like that, but she was the, 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 the gold standard icon of the black community yeah. when we didn't have one. That's- and the image we have is a, an elderly woman. And I'm thinking... She didn't do this shit when she was elderly. <laughs> no, she had to be pretty well, young, but she was a piece of ass. Well, let me let me <laughs> let me clean that up for you, Bill. Let me clean that up for you. First of all, two things. Let, let me clean this up for you. All right. First of all, you are right. It is an interpretation of Harriet Tubman, but it's not an interpretation of Jesus. Here's why. Okay. The reason why it's an interpretation of Harriet Tubman because the last known. Because her name wasn't Harriet Tubman. Right. They had no idea what she looked like. No clue. So they took this slave's uh, uh, interpretation of what she looked like and said, what does this woman look like? And they drew up wanted posters based on what he said. So they had a sketch artist draw up what she said. And the images that we had of Harriet Tubman were based on the, the wanted posters, based on what this slave said she looked like. I didn't even know that. Right. And, you know, and of course, she was the most, she she drew, and this is going by inflation standards and everything, she was the most, uh, she drew the most wanted money of any American wanted person in history. Mm. At that time, when they wanted her, when they were trying to catch her, she was wanted for $30,000. Mm. In today's money, that was almost five million dollars right. that they wanted this bitch that motherfucking bad right, 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 right. because of what she was doing. Because she was causing a lot of these uh, farmers money, right? Escape, mm-hmm. helping these guys to escape. Now, when they had the, it under slavery, yeah. Harriet Tubman, she didn't die until the mid, the mid to later eighteen hundred. Right. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So slavery was abolished in the late 1800s. 1865. So she was alive damn near to the end. Right. So then why would she be old in the picture? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they had no idea what she really looked like. Right. It was literally, like you said, it was an interpretation. Right. Yeah. So they were just drawing on that and they literally, the very first one of posters was literally just a black blotch with fucking eyeballs. Like they, it, the way that it was drawn <laughs> it, it literally just looked like a black blotch, pink lips, like a samba. Right. It, it, she looked like a samba on a fucking poster. It was demeaning, but it was like, oh. you motherfuckers have no idea what the fuck you chasing. Yes. But you know you want this bitch. <laughs> you know you want her, but you have no idea what you chasing. Right. You chasing a ghost. Which brings me back to what I'm saying. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You- but and- for what she did, yeah, like what you're saying, like she had to be young. She had to be right. in shape. <laughs> She was very intelligent. Very intelligent. So, you know what I'm saying? She had she, to be she probably was over here looking like Michelle K, all fit. And, nah, you know what I'm saying? She's nah, probably over here, like, I killing the game. He looked pretty. <laughs> that is, there's no muscle but here. But nobody I knew. You. Now, now, on the other side, 
Jesus was not an interpretation. No, he the image of Jesus was literally, they decided, okay, we have no idea what Jesus looks like. So the Pope at the time turned around and his nephew or something like that was a painter. Mm -hmm. And he told his son to depict Jesus for the church, right? I know that story. Right. And what his son did, his son was gay. Mm -hmm. And his son drew the image of his gay lover. His lover. So, yeah, yeah. So the long blonde hair and the, and the timid and the very feminine features of Jesus is a gay dude that was getting butt plunged by the, by the, by the, by the, by the uh, Pope's nephew. So it's not, it's not an interpretation. It's a real dude. <laughs> This is the first. Never heard of this story? I, I swear to you, I've yeah. never even heard yeah. of it. Like, yeah, it was literally the Pope's nephew's gay lover. He literally just he did a self portrait of his gay lover, presented it to the Pope, and he said, "That's what Jesus looks like." And the Pope ordained it, and that's why Jesus looks like that. So all of our grandmamas that would have right, this man above a, their mantle right, a, with the a, long a, flowing blonde hair. And you notice, you know, blind. yeah. And but Jesus is supposed to be in the Middle East, you yeah. know, the sun beating Bronze, on his skin yeah, and all that. Yeah. But he has this long flowing right. blonde, and these yeah. feminine, like really delicate features. Yeah, because he was a butt pirate. Oh <laughs> my God. I had no idea. You know what? That's no. Cool. I, I swear I never heard that story before yeah. in my life, yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah, it's documented too. I forget the guy's name. I just wonder how did they ever come up with a picture of Jesus when nobody really ever seen him, or supposedly never seen him like that. So yeah, how did how did you come? Well, up with they that? seen him, and there was right. imagery of him, but. but it all got destroyed right so when they finally found the dead sea scrolls and all the imagery that was going to be encompassed in the canonical works that became the bible mm -hmm. anything that didn't fit their narrative when they got together with the council in this year mm -hmm. they said you know what get rid of that shit get rid of that shit get rid of that oh wait a minute this is jesus with this motherfucking fro now fuck that peak Get rid of this shit, this shit, this shit. Who wrote this book? The book of the book of uh Mary. Oh no, no, we already discredited Mary. We're calling her a prostitute. So we can't turn around and say that she was supposed to be the leader of the church. That shit gotta go. Um mm -hmm. you know, the book of Enoch that actually explains other things that, that oh no, that shit gotta go. Mm -hmm. Um the Gnostic text that was all part of that, all these books that like the Ethiopian Bible has over fifteen hundred books. Yeah. yeah. Our Bible, yeah. sixty-six. Yeah. I, I know. Even the is. Catholic Bible has like eighty-three yeah. books. It How the fun. fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's it was crazy. Leonardo da Vinci. That's who it was. Was it Da Vinci? Yeah, it was Leonardo, okay. Leonardo yeah. da Vinci. And I think it was Capa is it Ca not Capasso? Uh, what was his boyfriend name? Leonardo. Yeah. So Jesus was his gay boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> The image. The image. Right, the image. I'm not going to say that, but yeah, the image. So oh all our God. grandparents so and no all idea. them pastors and stuff that be that yeah. had a big image of Jesus Christ, the superstar up in their church, and they, <laughs> they bow it over yeah. Jesus. And at the same breath, be talking about how gay and, and homosexuality is wrong. And that's what they worship it and didn't even know. Ignorance is bliss. That's it. <laughs> Goes back to what it said, man. You it people, makes you think, cause I swear wait, I never knew. So you gotta create a new god for them. Think about how many, mm -hmm. think of how many religions have just been simply eradicated. There's shit that we're never gonna know about. Right. It's, I believe that because nobody right. really truly knows. We're just speculating. No, they, they, no this is not speculation. A lot of stuff is known. Some of it, and they're but they're not teaching the masses. Because in order to run, continue to run the world in this caste system for us to have 90% of the unknown, I mean, not knowing, and the 10% who know. That's what the uh, 5 percenters teach in the lessons that they teach. That's the the ninety the 85% is the unknowing, the 10% is the ones who um, do know, 
and the five percent is the ones the poor righteous teachers that are out there saying what's today's mathematic god you know and all of that that's what they teach because they these little these people are like five ten percent of the world who run this planet um, see and they have all this information all of that shit. <laughs> see, me, me and you have been going at this see. since 98. I met this brother in 1998, and he's been doing this shit. Now, let me tell you. Don't let me bring out the scroll. When he used to do this shit, I used to look at this mother. I used to look at him like, shut your dumb ass. I'm like, what the hell is you talking about? I was I was in my office printing stuff. Because I, I, was, I was already learning this stuff before I got in the military. Mm -hmm. Like, he would say stuff, so, and I would think he's speaking another language. He'd be like, yo, yo, I'm going to tell you about the Epic of Gilgamesh. You know about that? I'm like, what the yeah. fuck is you talking about, I dog? I was on it. You from New York or you from, where is you from? <laughs> Planet Riz. The man oh, from Planet Riz. Man. No. So you studied like, way oh, back. Yeah. Uh, he he was. I started this in like 85, 86. So there's still, me off. Gav has a lot of knowledge floating around in there. And... You know, it's taken me a lot of years to realize a lot of the stuff that he has said. You know, there is a lot of good truths to it. Just for me, what I look at as the big picture is, I got to look at it from the mindset and the frame that the reality that we live in mm -hmm. is force fed to us. So regardless of what Gav is told me and the stuff that I've learned from other books and stuff like that or the stuff that's been brainwashed to me, I gotta take it all at, with a grain of salt and realize you know what, at the end of the day the shit that we're doing now, I know that ain't right mm. <laughs> it just, like the puzzle pieces don't fit mm. now, there are a lot of things that other pieces fit and you know, a lot of things have made a lot more sense to me but uh, <laughs> I just can't drink the Kool-Aid of today's society knowing the things that I know now. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap up today's show. Uh, it's been another great one. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to see you on the next one. But to let you know, I've been King Bear in the building. Michelle K. And this is the Truth Seeker. And we're going to see y'all on the next one. Y'all be good. Peace. Peace.